Um, here I am back in the wonderful, um, wild and woolly world of London. And my hair, as you can see, has got rather longer than I'd love. Tomorrow morning, it's time for a haircut. And as you can see, I've got quite stubbly. Um, I've been way, way outside London. And as a result, I've picked up put a tan. It's not so evident on this camera and lost a fair bit of weight, which is, is no bad thing. But in any case, here's two hypothetical situations. If I start a conversation and say, I believe migration is an issue where we need to talk about it and that there is a limited amount of people that any country can absorb without damaging the integrity of the culture of that country and causing economic overload and e the infrastructure of that country to fail, as versus get them all out, chuck them in a boat and shoot them, which do you think is probably a more rational or reasonable approach? Also, do you think if I use that second rather vile example, that I hold some responsibility for what I say? I would hope in a civilised society we do. You can't just say anything you want and not expect there to be consequences. Freedom of speech, sure, but that carries consequences. If I walk outside right now and insult my neighbour, I'm free to do it. I'm free to open the door and knock on his door and go, all right, Dennis, and say something vile about him or his late wife or his dog. And he's also free to return, go, Marcus, you're a bloody idiot, and hit me with his walking stick. Or, attack. you know, it would be viewed as me provoking him. Speech carries consequences. And the people, and the fact we're seeing so many lovely pro, um, presenters trying to present the people involved in the rioting as just having an opinion without quoting what they actually say is quite interesting. It's a, one thing to have an opinion. It's an entirely different thing to recommend destroying a building with people inside it using language I won't even begin to repeat. Could we argue about whether these people are being perhaps un given unduly harsh sentences. There's some room for argument there, but perhaps it will send a message to people next time that we live in a society. We're not a bunch of sort of um, individuals just living in cupboards and that we what we say impacts people. If I walk around this, the town sort of um, talking offensively, other people may listen to me and they may choose to act on me, so I should think about what I say. There is a certain logic to that. Also, there's been much silly talk and use of examples, and I'll be coming back to this in the next video, of particular referendums from other countries. And yes, I am looking at you, uh, Mr. Webber, and your rather silly use of the Irish referendum of 2004, which you plainly have misused and tried to extrapolate from in a bizarre way and right back... In concerns from now to 20 years ago but that deserves a video of its own and we'll be coming to that next because you plainly didn't bother to set a context and you knew most of your viewers wouldn't know that context and they wouldn't look it up and we've had people like you and others banging on all day long about how political prisoners blah 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 uh, blah, 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 and attempts to compare it to Operation Motorman and Demetrius and internment. The funny thing is the people comparing it to that are the same kind of people who 20 or 30 years ago would have been going on about Irish scum locked them up, which makes it all rather hilarious, really. It makes it just all that much more hilarious.